There's a famous saying from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, لا يكون حبك كلفا ولا بغضك تلفا. He said, when you love someone, don't love them so much that you attach too much to them. And if you hate someone, then don't hate them so much that it's destructive. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said something very similar that, you know, it may be one day that the person you love most becomes your enemy. And it may be that your enemy one day becomes a beloved friend. And the way that you get around loving too much to where you attach your faith to a person and your faith tanks and your disappointment just grows if anything happens or hating someone so much that it consumes you is to attach that love and hate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That way there is always balance. And subhanAllah on the day of judgment, you never know who you're going to run into in Jannah that actually is going to be there enjoying it with you rather than being thrown into hellfire because of you. So we've spoken about family and friends, and there are many conversations that we find in the Quran and the Sunnah between the people of paradise. And there are categories of foes, categories of those who used to be your opponents in this life. And one category are those that used to call you to evil, the friend that used to try to be a sahib that tried to drag you into hellfire instead of Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ That once again, they're inquiring with one another. They're asking about this person, asking about that person. So some friends have found each other and there's a mutual friend that's clearly missing from the gathering. قَالَ قَائِلُ مِنْهُمْ إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِينَ And then one of them says, you know, I remember a close friend of mine that used to be with me in dunya. يَقُولُ أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ And he used to tell me, do you really believe in this stuff? Do you really believe that faith is true? Do you really believe in an afterlife? أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا وَعِظَامًا أَإِنَّا لَمَدِينُونَ Do you really think that once we die and we become bones and dirt, that we're suddenly going to come back and that we're going to live after that? So this person that is speaking to others in Jannah about his old friend who used to call him to evil says, do you want to look for that person? And then he goes out to look for his friend and he sees his friend in the lowest part of hellfire. And as he looks at his friend in hellfire, he says, Tallahi in kittala turdeen, wa lawla ni'matu rabbi lakuntu minal muhdareen. You know, you almost got me. You almost made me amongst those that followed your path. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me from this particular fate. And Allah Azza wa granted me paradise instead. And he says, Afama nahnu bimayyiteen. Like, is this real? Are we really not going to die anymore? Have I really been saved from all of this fitna, all this temptation? These people that used to say there is no afterlife and everything that comes after Jannah, is there even an after Jannah? Am I really here forever? And he says, Is it really so that we only die once and we're never punished again? And he says, he said, what an incredible success this is. This is what those who strive should be striving for. Now, subhanAllah, it's really interesting because when you read in the books of Tafsir, some of the Mufassirin, they said that the two friends that are being referred to here are the two men in Surah Al-Kahf. Remember that there was the person who had two gardens and he thought that because he had two gardens, he was preferred to the other person. And he said, you know, I don't think that I'm going to be resurrected. And even if I'm resurrected, if there is such thing as an afterlife, then I'm pretty sure I'll do well over there as well. So that's one group of Mufassirun. They said that this is referring to those same two people in Surah Al-Kahf, the person with two gardens who thought that he was superior because of what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala blessed him with in this dunya and did not prepare himself to attain the garden of the hereafter. And now the person that he was looking down upon has Jannah while he has Jahannam, while that person is in the midst of hellfire. Then you find another narration about two men that were actually business partners. And this shows up in some of the books of Tafsir as well. 
And these two business partners were as different as could be. One of them righteous, religious, of high character. The other one could care less. He was all about his money. And so they make this business deal where they earn 8,000 dinars and they split the 8,000 into 4,000 and 4,000. And basically, as the partner who's not religious takes that 4,000 dinars, he starts to spend it in various ways. So first he purchases a piece of land and he thinks that this real estate is the best thing that's ever happened to him. Whereas his believing partner, he spends a thousand dinars in sadaqah and he says, Oh Allah, I'm seeking to purchase the land of Al-Jannah. And he mocks him. You know, like what land in Jannah are you talking about? You really believe that you're going to get any type of property in Jannah? And then he goes and he purchases a home. And his righteous friend says, Oh Allah, I'm spending a thousand dinars and I'm seeking a home in paradise. And he says to him, what are you talking about? There is no home in paradise. Stop wasting your time. And then he goes and he spends a thousand dinars on a relationship. And he says, oh Allah, I'm spending a thousand dinars and I'm seeking the spouse of Al-Jannah. And he says, what are you talking about? There is no spouse in Jannah, nothing that's going to happen for you there. And then he takes his last thousand dinars and he spends it on servants and all sorts of material things. And the righteous one spends it and he says, Oh Allah, I'm seeking the servants and the material things and the adornment of Al Jannah. And SubhanAllah, the entire time as he's spending for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, he's being looked down upon and mocked. And certainly, you know, these narrations might be relegated to something very specific. But think about our own lives the people that try to tempt us and they don't outright insult us. But what they do do is they try to put down the religion and they try to make it seem like it's not that big of a deal. Like, come on, you're taking this religion stuff way too seriously. And when they're saying that, what they're implying is go ahead and enjoy the sinfulness because it's not going to be that severe in consequence. And the believer is thinking, I'm not losing my Jannah because of that. So you have to ignore the whispers of shaitan and you've got to ignore the whispers sometimes of your own friends. These are people that were friends in dunya and one friend was trying to take them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us righteous friends and grant us righteous places. Allahumma ameen. So that's one category on the day of judgment, right? The person that tried to take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now you're saying, Alhamdulillah, I did not listen to you. The next category is your tyrant, your oppressor, someone who hurt you. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises the oppressed that I swear by my might, I will come to your aid, even if it's after some time. And this religion is not one that tells the oppressed to just put their oppression away and to pretend that it doesn't exist. This is a religion that tells you that you will have justice on the day of judgment. And here, the Prophet tells us that there are people in Jannah that will be able to look through a window into the hellfire and to see those that oppress them, those that harm them being punished. And they would know thereby that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed fulfilled his promise. Ka'ab radiallahu anhu says, between Jannah and Nar, there are peepholes. And when a believer wants to look at his oppressor from this world, he looks through one of those peepholes and he sees the person that harmed him and sees the person that did so much to them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not let that dua go to waste. Now, there are some people who will bump into folks in Jannah that they thought were not going to make it. And this is one of the strange occurrences that we find from the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala actually laughs at two men. When the murderer and the murdered meet in Jannah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala laughs at them. Imagine the scene on the Day of Judgment when Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu runs into Wahshi radiallahu anhu in Jannah. And this is really incredible, subhanAllah. The Prophet sallallahu said, because it may be that someone martyred someone else and then they made repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they too were martyred. So they're both shuhada and they're in Jannah now in this degree together and they're bumping into each other in Jannah. Imagine Hamza and Wahshi. Imagine the shuhada of Uhud when they bump into Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, like, wait, you're here as well? You know, you're the person that caused all this heartache. Ikrama ibn Abi Jahal, who died a shaheed. You know, Ikrama radiallahu anhu was one of the architects of Uhud. 
And he's there now, and the Shuhada of Uhud are meeting with Ikrama radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet said, Allah laughs at this meeting because it seems like such an awkward meeting. But the reality is what? That there are some people that do very bad things and then they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts both of those people in Jannah without decreasing the reward of the one that was harmed in any way whatsoever. And that you're not going to be upset like, Ya Allah, how did this person make it? Throw them out of Jannah. No, because when you get to Jannah, there is no hatred, no harm, nothing that exists of bad feelings between two brothers or two sisters in Jannah. The Prophet Wasallam said that when you enter Jannah, you will be brothers with no disagreement, no hatred amongst you. And your hearts will be like one man's heart and you will be engaged in glorifying Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala together morning and evening. And you are going to see people that maybe you quarreled with and you want to solve your disagreements here because most situations have mutual wrongdoing. It's, it's not always the case and it's in fact rarely the case that you have someone who is entirely in the wrong and the other person that's entirely in the right. You have a lot of people that quarreled, brothers and sisters that quarreled and that's why you have this emphasis from the Prophet on people making up with one another, people reconciling amongst themselves. And imagine SubhanAllah Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And it's one of the, the hardest things that you see even from the Sahaba. While it was instigated from the outside, there was a war that took place. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was so saddened when he ended up on the opposite side and you had an instigator that attacks the camp of Ali radiallahu anhu and attacks the likes of Aisha radiallahu anha and Talha and Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And it causes them to go into a battle with one another. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu specifically, after Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was killed, was martyred, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu washed Talha radiallahu anhu. And then he prayed upon him. And then he called the people forward. And he had his son, Muhammad ibn Talha, sit next to him. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu with the son of Talha sitting next to him, he said, you know, some people are making the claim that only fools came out to fight. You know, people thought that, that Ali radiallahu anhu would be happy if his opponents were insulted. And he's saying, no, the most honored faces on earth came out to this. For verily, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, Talha wa Zubair jaraya fil jannah. Talha and Zubair are my neighbors in Jannah. And he said, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you and me amongst those whom are mentioned in the ayah that we will remove from their hearts any type of sense of injury, any hurt, and they will be brothers joyfully facing each other on thrones of dignity, that anything in their hearts, all hard feelings are taken away, that there is no resentment that's left there. There is no sense of, well, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive that person? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise that person? And so that former foe would actually become your friend and both of you are enjoying the reward and the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together in paradise. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah فَدَخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدَخُلِي جَنَّتِي